Welcome everyone. We're just getting started with some music for the Germans. And you'll get my joke in a moment. Welcome everyone. Hi Baris. Just got the agenda. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Hi from Switzerland. Ah, from Switzerland. Cool. Welcome. Hello. And we've got some more of our team members joining. Hey, Devin. Hello, everyone. I think um, some people will be joining partly through because the Maker community call is on right now as well. <laughs> um, but people will be filtering in as we keep going. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. This is the agenda for tonight. Um, Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Where are you calling from? Um, you don't have to say. Sorry, yes, uh, I'm based in Munich. I'm Munich. Yes. Can you hear the music I'm playing? Oh, uh, yeah. Which, oh, it's German, now I can tell. I think Who's it's feel free, right? Excuse I'll me? Put the it means feel free. Is that right? Okay. There's no words up right now. Anyway, we're going to start in just Catch a moment. Tune. Ah, okay, okay. Um, we're going to start in just a moment. Whoops, this is not the right slide. Um, you had a, a preview of uh, some, some celebratory news. Um, in just a moment, we'll get started. This is the agenda. We've got a lot of updates tonight and then we will jump into our big topic which is full onboarding and then we'll hear about tax forms. Okay cool so I'll stop sharing and take off the music. And now my computer is frozen just for one second. Okay, welcome everyone to the community, the Centrifuge Community Call. My name is Kate. I'll be guiding you through tonight's um, session. Um, we're focusing on pool onboarding tonight, um, and we're going to be sharing a lot of updates um, and a lot of info. So I really want to invite all of you to ask questions whenever you like. You can, of course, um, take your mic off and, and speak your voice. Um, we really want to encourage that in this group. Um, our, our goal is for this, this community to, to go to the point where we're having um, these calls, we're having lots of discussions and debates. And yeah, if you do want to chip in with questions or comments, um, feel free, feel really invited. And just to also mention that this is a recorded call. So um, I'm going to ask everyone joining to do a very basic check-in and Sometimes I've been told that it sounds like I'm saying chicken because I'm from New Zealand and we say that we say our ease is eyes, but I'm saying check in. So the, the check in is very um, basic. All you have to do is click the three little dots in the top um, of your little screen um, and change your name. You can see I just did it. Um, Kate, I'm feeling happy. So change the, the second part of your name to just the mood that you're in right now. There's three little dots on the top of your face. Scroll down to rename and just let us know how you're feeling right now. And that goes for all of the Centrifuge team members as well. Thank you. Cassidy is energized. Helena is excited. Um, Sarah. Yours is quite, um, actually I can check what yours is. I can't see Lucas's full one. What's that like a? A Zoom ninja. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've got, oh. Saro is super chill. I like that. Yeah. Super chill. Awesome. Effervescent from Devon. That's an interesting one. Cool. And do remember to leave your name, your, your first name at the beginning. So if we need to call you, we can. But yeah, the, the check-in exercise is just to, just to change your Zoom name to say a bit about how you're feeling right now. So, <laughs> and welcome very high. 
So to anyone um, just joining, we're just getting started. We're doing a, a basic check-in by changing our name if you want to how we're feeling um, and keep doing that through the call. You can also change it back if you know something, if you feel suddenly very tired or very unhigh, feel free. But I'll pass over to Miguel to start off. Um, he's gonna take us through a very cool update about cha-cha-cha. And I'll just ensure that you can share, Miguel. Yep, one second. <clears throat> all right can you all see my screen is it too small it's good yep. um all right yes i do awesome thank you um yeah so my name is miguel i think it's the first time i actually participate actively in this, um, in the community call. So hello everyone. Um, I'm a software engineer here at the Centrifuge in the protocol team. And uh, in the last few few weeks or month, we, we released a, a testnet, a relay, te a relay chain testnet on, on the Polkadot ecosystem called ChaChaCha. So a little bit of background on that is that, <clears throat> you know, like many other projects that are in, the, in this space, um, we're starting to adapt our standalone chains to, to become a parachains. And that means, you know, from testing out the new uh, cumulus palette, our new consensus algorithm, um, the cross-chain messaging and, and, and so on. So we had to start up our own relay chain to, to test all this. And <clears throat> this is where cha cha, -cha comes, in, uh, comes to life. Um, so I don't know if you guys know a little bit of like how hard it is to get into Rococo at the moment in um, in the uh, in Polkadot, in the, the testnet for Polkadot, Rococo, I don't know how much experience you have with that, but it's fairly hard. And uh, the parity team is mainly focusing on stability, scalability, and, and testing out some of the, the core features, uh, like auctions and crowd loans. So it's very difficult to get in uh, at first. And there's a waiting list, and things change very fast uh, or very slow. So, um, so yeah, we did talk to Parity and decided to, to get Cha Cha Cha, uh, make Cha 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 available for, um, for, for, for everyone and immediately. So we hope that Cha 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 can enable uh, various things. One or some of them could be like, you know, testing the Cumulus setup earlier in a public de deployed environment with networking in place, uh, checking as well the inter interoperability with, with, other, with other projects using the XCM palette. And of course, identifying any any performance on bottlenecks or issues um, a bit earlier. So a bit of the characteristics of Cha Cha Cha, um, we want to make it as, you know, the same code base as Rococo, which is pretty much a rename of the runtime. Um, the reason for that is that any changes that come to Rococo will be added to Cha 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 in a, in a timely manner. And we will cycle really fast. So, you know, you can be part of, a, of, the, of the relay chain at uh, any point in time, but then we will cycle with new upgrades and we have to refresh and all that. So it doesn't ensure any, any availability of the previous data, but allows us to fast iterate fast on the, on the code base and will be available immediately. So you just have to register and we will approve you. And then you can start testing with other projects as well, um, interchanging data uh, that makes sense for your business, uh, for your business cases. So yeah, I mean, a, bit of, a little bit of the, the steps basically the same ones as Rococo. In fact, they are in the same wiki document from, uh, from Web3, from Polkadot as well. So uh, the process is like run active validators, run your collator, fill up a form, and head to our element channel to, to get more you know, guidance on, on when and how to, to join the, the, the parachain, but that will be done immediately. And I'm not really sure where to put all this uh, right now, but everything is in this, um, if you already tried to join Rococo, you probably know this link here. Um, so I can paste it as well in the in the channel now. Uh, but the idea is that um, it's basically merged right now with the, with the Rococo instructions. Um, there is 
no process in terms of promoting chains that are in charge as well to Rococo yet, uh, but it is in a parallel environment that you can start this immediately. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's it, unless um, you guys have any questions for me. Um, that's all I have to say. Cool, if you wanted to stop sharing, then we can um, look to see. Does anyone have a question for Miguel about Cha 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 or comment? Or in the chat, uh, cool. And Miguel has put the, the link to that into the chat. Um, just out of curiosity, um, oh, there's one there. So could Cha 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 replace the Coco, Miguel? The Coco? No, no, that's not the, that's not the plan. Uh, at least uh, we never really talk about it with the parity at that level. The idea is that Rococo, it will remain a test net. Um, with a with a different warranty guarantees that the cha 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 and cha 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 life cycle will be slightly different, uh, but it's a bit uncertain at the moment what is going to be cha 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 role um, as soon as we or parity has gone up to um, to Kusama and Polkadot. But the only um, main thing is that it's available immediately and it will be a clone of the code base. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. I, joined, I joined a little bit late, so apologies if you said it. Do you have a little bit of an overview of like what type of projects are using it? Like, do you have any feedback insights on that? Uh, cha -cha -cha, up to like last week, we had um, four external projects. Um, I don't remember the names, but there are a variety of them, I think. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't remember right now, but there are four of them that they were working on it. Now, since the upgrade that we did to Rococo and the auction mechanisms and the crowd loan uh, testing, um, things got a bit more confused and we only have two at the moment, external ones. So we hopefully to get more on board um, because right now it will be through, we have to bypass the crowd loan and the auction mechanism to add the, to add para change without having to go through all that. Okay, cool. Let's um, wrap that there. And if you do have other questions, put them in the chat. So now we're going to move on to some really important uh, introductions because in the last uh, two weeks at, in the Centrifuge team, we have four uh, amazing new humans. So I'd just like each of you to say a very quick hello and I'll start with Devon. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I just joined with Centrifuge starting this week. I'm going to be essentially the role title as account manager, but I see myself more as an overall helpful person who will work with investors, asset originators, and so on and so forth, just to be a go-to to help everyone out. Uh, one thing I really like doing is just learning. And in crypto, there's always something to be learned. Uh, if I'm not learning about cryptocurrency, I'm probably deep in Wikipedia reading about some entirely random thing. The thing that excites me most about Centrifuge uh, and joining you all is that there's an actual working product where people can invest in real world assets. I think that's absolutely super mega cool. Thank you, Devin, and welcome. Um, JP. Hey, yeah, my name is uh, JP. I just joined Centrifuge last week as a front end engineer. Um, I'll be working on uh, the UI of Tin Lake, the Tin Lake app. Uh, one of my one of my big hobbies is board games. Uh, one of my favorite games right now is a game called Cockroach Poker. Um, so if you like fun little card games uh, that require bluffing, um, it's a fun one. Um, one of the things that uh, excites me about Centrifuge uh, the most is just like bringing real world assets to the blockchain. I think it's the next big step for DeFi. And, uh, and I like the way that Centrifuge is doing that and unlocking ways for people to borrow money. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, JP. Welcome. And Frederick. Hi, um, I'm Frederick. I'm going to work as a software engineer at Centrifuge, and I'm also going to work. I'm going to work at the protocol team. And one thing I really enjoy is just diving into non-computer science-related topics like biochemistry or philosophy or other stuffs because, yeah. It's, 
I really like to jo uh, to learn new stuff, and it really helps me getting a new perspective on work related problem also. And I'm excited about centrifuges because we we are we are daring to challenge the financial system, and I think whichever change this will be, I think challenging the system is a good thing. Yes, that's it for me. Yeah, nice. All about challenging the system, Frederick. Very cool. And lastly, Mark. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Mark. I just joined uh, Centrifuges last week. I'm a Rust engineer working mainly on the protocol day for now with Miguel and implementing the crowd and stuff. Um, I'm, a, I'm a pure scientist in a sense. I'm, I love math, physics, and um, and stuff like that. And also like Frederick, challenging finance is, uh, I think there's a lot of room for that uh, with, with, the, with DeFi. And this is what excites me much. That's it. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, thanks all, all of you and welcome. Um, so I think that was a really good point. Uh, this all this chat about challenging um, default world finance is the perfect chance to, yeah, to share the news that we have um, done some pretty good work and there's over 7 um, million six, uh, uh, die total value locked in um, Tin Lake right now. So over seven and a half million, which is super cool. And you can see Carlton is also super excited. Um, <laughs> so this is a, obviously, um, yeah, a really good good event that's the result of work from everyone, not just the Centrifuge team, it's, it's the investors, it's the, the validators. So congrats everyone, it's um, very cool. And with that, I'll pass to, to Lucas just to say a bit more, connect us back to the, the reason why this kind of fight against default finance is so important. Yeah, actually, maybe also um, one number that I really like to look at is just number of investors and how many. And um, before we go into just why we're doing what we're doing, I think we're now at around 150 different addresses holding drop tokens from the um, seven or so pools. We have more pools going live soon. Uh, the biggest pool actually is, is New Silver uh, with 3 million die. Uh, they are, I think today, from, from what I know, going to draw another uh, 1.3 million um, and originate new loans. So I think there's four different transactions that they're doing with the money that investors have recently invested in. Um, so that's, that's really cool to see. Um, but yeah, maybe a bit to zoom out um, and talk about real world assets and why and how. Um, I want to start with um, a bit of a crazy number. In 2020, the Fed printed $3 trillion, right? But if you think about this crazy amount, like how much actually went to the SMEs, individuals, like people that needed money, people that were trying to borrow money and build a, build a business or bridge some gap in capital? Basically nothing, right? The Fed went to the place where it was the easiest, uh, and those are the large corporations buying bonds um, at, an, an order, at a scale that has never been seen before. So some of the largest corporates in the world who have like a financial infrastructure that is works obviously extremely well for them, basically got free money. Uh, while as a small business, your cost of capital went down a little bit, but um, of course not in, not in that order of magnitude. And that makes it extremely unfair, right? So now we have this huge corporation that can do, um, do a lot more than you can because they're paying a lot less for, for the money the, the, that is the fuel that fuels their business. So I think it's pretty crazy. Um, and so Centrifuge has always started with this focus and the idea that actually we can use um, this, I, this decentralized open technology to build a system that actually empowers the small people, makes these inefficiencies less, less extreme because technology in general doesn't care how big you are, how small you are, right? It's the human processes, it's, a, it's those things that make it really tricky. 
So, so what does it look like today, right? Like many SMEs and uh, borrow, smaller borrowers, they depend on, on access to credit to get an education, to buy a car, to buy a house, to scale your business, to ship something from, uh, from one side of the planet to another. And they spent months waiting, filling out forms, dealing with lawyers, accountants, underwriters, trying to get the attention of a bank um, and sort of going through that very gruesome process, right? And then like if you manage to get money from a bank, you're usually locked in, right? Like you can refinance your loan, but there's no way that you can just go on the market and like get the cheapest offer you can get. You're locked in, like you could say you're like, they're stuck like a boat in the Suez Canal. Um, so how does this change? Like, how do we think that DeFi and centrifuge will change that? Um, I think in the future, anyone with the need of capital should be able to get around this process and get diversity and get, get access to actually a competitive system, a competitive market that is open to them. If you think about sort of the process that I talked about, like as you're as you're going through this, right? Like if there's any alternative to this, you'll probably want to try and take it, right? And I believe that DeFi can be this alternative. It can be this open system that lets you um, get access to capital. And then if you're at current access to capital, your liquidity is not, not attractive here, you can move it somewhere else. If you want to uh, go to Maker, you can go to Maker. If you want to go to Ava, you can do that and it takes uh, one transaction, a couple of maybe a minute, and you move you've moved your liquidity from A to B, um, and that is hugely powerful, right? Because it gives everyone this ability to play in or to to interact in this financial market that today really is just open to the global uh, global two thousand companies, right? So yeah, so that's that's what we're doing, right? So real world assets for us is about bringing not just the Apple bonds and Apple shares to, to crypto, to DeFi, but actually making this open to everybody. And I think this is, this is sort of what's ingrained in DeFi from the start. It's that no matter how small your token is, you can still get liquidity on Uniswap, right? And so the same way, no matter how big of a business you are, what, what your financial needs are, you should be able to find some, some solution. Um, so yeah, so we're talking about bringing it back to the TVL. We're at seven and a half million, tiny fraction of where we can go, but we all know how much there is, how much more there is out there in the real world. So let's see how we can, how we can bring more and more into to what we're doing. Cool, that was awesome. Thanks, Lucas. Anyone from the, the room want to offer something, a reflection based on that? A question, a comment, even if you've got your camera off, you can still take your mic off, feel free. I think everyone's already thinking about the long weekend that at least a lot of people in the call are, are about to go into. <laughs> Absolutely. Or maybe they're thinking about how where where there's a first of April choke hidden somewhere in our community call. But yeah, I was thinking about it. No, yeah. Um, cool. So I think it is quite a lot to take in as well. It's some it's big picture thinking, and I think that's a really good point to, to that you ended on, Lucas. Like it's seven and a half million total value locked, and let's think about the you know what is out there in the financial system. Um, it is huge amounts. So yeah, this is the start of a journey and um, it's really cool that you're all here with us. Um, it's not the very start, obviously, but, um, and we've got some claps in from Fabian and a question, Barris, do you feel like you could take your microphone off and, and ask that question, Barris? It's just on the bottom, there you go. Yeah, sure. um, so how many pools did you have uh, since the inception of this project so far. So at the moment, if I go to Tin Lake, I see there are about approximately 10 pools. Um, three of them were oversubscribed. 
uh, two are in the pipeline and four are available. Yeah, I can talk a bit about it. So we've, we've shipped a few iterations of, of the product and sort of, I think we're sort of on the third major iteration, which we went live in November and all the pools they've, you see now, they've launched um, uh, somewhere between November and today and Factor Chain and Peshesa are going live um, in the coming weeks. Um, we did experiments before uh, last in summer uh, between May and May and uh, September, we did um, about two million um, in financing with different a console freight, new silver, uh, harbor trade. Um, they were ones that we worked Paper with at the time. Well. Paper chain as well, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so with those seven pool, those seven pools that are live now, uh, the oversubscribed and the open ones. Um, they're the ones we're working with. We're looking to add more, of course. Um, okay. More assets, more diversity. So how do you screen these um, asset originators? I mean, how long does it take that from the application until it goes live on Tin Lake? Um, so is that a quick and dirty process or? Maybe I can take that. Yeah, you might have to take sure. that. So uh, absolutely, it's a decentralized protocol. So, you know, uh, first of all, uh, the asset originator, they present themselves, uh, how they issue, you know, if it's an issuer, they, they, they own themselves or uh, if it is an independent third party being the issuer here. Uh, and then actually every investor needs to go through uh, all these, you know, offering materials, um, the executive summary subscription agreement should check it carefully, ask questions. There is a forum thread where all of these asset originators uh, represent, introduce themselves, ask questions. If they are on Telegram, you can, you know, send them direct messages or just ask in uh, the public chat up to you. You know, uh, of course, we would like, you know, uh, to have high quality assets on the platform. So that's why we do a due diligence ourselves, but it's completely optional. So uh, you should do your, your own research. And I think we had also already, you know, published a few uh, forum uh, posts actually what we recommend uh, as a professional kind of you know a self-educated uh, investor you should should go through uh, and that's also basically the reason why you see there are different assets uh, different APRs because they have a different nature and of course a different risk so that means uh, a lower APR basically usually means um, because that is kind of the market rate you know where uh, they compete with uh, where can they get a cheaper money from uh, and uh, as higher the APR, typically also as high the risk. So uh, be be careful what you do, and then it's not you know uh, the higher APR the better investment. Uh, that it depends on your own appetite, your own risk profile, uh, etc. Cool. And we're going to have a panel discussion on this um, topic in the next community call in two weeks' time, around you know, and get a few experts in the room around yeah sizing out the pools and and risk versus. Um, return. So do join for that as well. Just um, wondering any of the other people in the room have any last questions before we move on to showing how it's becoming easier to join the Tin Lake pools. And just there's a few people joining, Sam or Ivor or Mizuk, anything from you before we move on? Um, no, not at the moment. Cool. We had just one in the chat from Peter, are there plans to, for example, give the token holders a vote in this process of onboarding? We'll just... Cassidy, do you want to answer? Talk about the underwriter token? Um, so the way that we're trying to implement this is actually using the TIN token. I can drop a link here if you want to read a little bit more about how this mechanism would work. But the idea would be adding a functionality to the TIN token to allow a um, diverse group of underwriters to be able to participate um, and vote on what type of assets actually get financed by TinLink. Maybe to add a, a, a few, um, you know, uh, things here. Um, 
underwriting is something, you know, you need uh, to be an expert in the asset itself. You need, really need to understand the asset itself, um, how it is originated, what is part of the risk assessment, what is actually part of, you know, uh, the risk um, and uh, be able to assess that. So I think, you know, what we see long-term, they will be independent from the asset originators, um, professional investors with specific expertise and uh, the specific asset class, uh, helping then the, actually the investor community uh, with, with their experience to underwrite those assets, assess them uh, with, you know, putting skin in the game, uh, using their own TIN tokens actually to, to vote on those assets uh, that you as an average investor, uh, you know, need to be less concerned about uh, the single assets because, hey, there is not a single uh, asset originator kind of, you know, brought them onto the platform. It's really a community uh, of underwriters, uh, subject matter experts doing it for you. Great, thank you, Martin. So now we're at halfway point in our call and we're going to move to Yerwin to show us, um, yeah, a bit about how our onboarding for investors has improved and how joining one of the pools is becoming much easier. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Kate. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeroen. Uh, I'm a software engineer also on the Centerfridge team for, I think, about eight or nine months now. Uh, I've been mostly working on the, the Dinlake UI that I think a lot of you have probably used. Um, and so what I have been, one of the things that I've been building uh, is the new onboarding UI. Um, and so, yeah, the idea is basically to give you a little bit of an overview of what we've built. And, um, but first I wanted to get into why we're building this and like what, what our kind of thought process behind this is. Um, so as Lucas was saying before, like with Tin Lake pools, you're investing in real world assets. You're not investing in some kind of cryptocurrency um, you're investing in, I don't know, you, in, in real estate, for example, with Neil Silver or um, supply chain financings with uh, Conservate. Um, and that brings a lot of advantages, like very stable yields, um, but it also brings on some more regulation. Um, there, there's US regulations for investing in these kind of assets, and um, we can't avoid that. Um, and so our goal really is to try to make it as smooth as possible for you as an investor. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do here. Um, I also want to say that um, what I'm going to show you today um, is it, live for most of the tools already. Um, it's definitely a work in progress. Uh, I'm very open to hearing feedback from any of you here. Um, I think we've done a lot and it's improved a lot, but I would also say there's a lot of improvements still to make. Um, so if you have any ideas, like please do let me let us know here in the call or any other time on the forum or some other channel. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is, um, so we're both trying to make it smooth, um, but part of that is also by automating more things. Uh, and a big reason for that is like onboarding used to be for a few months ago, a very manual process. Uh, that means we need to spend a lot of time on it. That basically makes it expensive. Uh, and that's a large part, large part of why the minimum investment amount was uh, 10,000 DAI uh, until recently. Um, because of this new UI, uh, we've been able to automate more which makes it easier. And that, uh, that means we've been able to lower it to 5,000. Um, but it, we're definitely hoping to kind of keep improving this and maybe over time uh, lower it even more to um, open the pools to uh, smaller investors. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you um, some uh, screenshots of the new UI. I'm not doing a live demo because there's a lot of private information. I don't want to show that here. Um, I'm actually, I had took this screenshot this morning. Uh, I see it's already gone from 2.5 to 3 million. So. It's a funny example of how quickly we're growing. Um, so yeah, let's say you're um, trying to invest in new silver. Um, so you're looking at the pool overview and then you would click on the invest button. Um, that brings you to this onboarding page. Um, so yeah, there are, this gives you kind of an overview of what you need to do um, and gives you some explanation of why this is um, done. Um, to give you a little bit of an overview of like what the different steps are in this process. Um, so. You would start by connecting your Ethereum wallet. Um, so basically your entire identity um, and uh, the agreement to sign, all of this is linked to your Ethereum address. Um, then you would go through the KYC process. Uh, KYC is what's called know your customer. Um, and this basically means we need to know who the, or the issuers of these pools uh, need to know who the investors are that are investing in their, uh, in their assets. Um, and we're using a third party called Securitize 
uh, that's basically handling these uh, KYC steps for us. Um, so you would go to securitize and enter your information there and get verified. Um, then the next step is for every pool that you invest in, uh, you need to kind of sign what's called a subscription agreement. Uh, this is basically a document um, describing uh, kind of describing the pool, describing the assets, describing the risks, um, and you need to end, again enter some information. Um, so yeah, you would start by uh, doing KYC. So you go to Securitize. Um, on Securitize, you uh, the first time you have to create an account. Um, what's really important here is that um, you only have to do this once if you want to invest into multiple Tinic pools. Uh, so that's not a big team that we're trying to do. It's like the first time that you're investing in Tinic, we need a lot of information that's simply required by law. Um, but we do try to um, make it a lot easier the next time. So uh, hopefully if you're investing once, then maybe you're going to invest another time in another pool. Um, it's also really good for diversification and stuff like that. Uh, and so we're making that easier and KYC therefore is only a one-time process. Um, on Securitize, you then have to enter some information. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these steps right now, but basically it's about sharing your um, identification, um, sharing uh, a proof of address, um, and that's about it. Um, ideally, if everything goes well, um, this could happen in about five to 10 minutes. Um, if there needs to be some more checks, it might take a little bit longer. Um, what I would really suggest is to really read the instructions well. Um, if you provide the documents in, the, in kind of the format that they're uh, asking for, um, it can be very automated and you can be done in five minutes, basically. Uh, so really read well what they're uh, asking you. Um, then if you go back to our app uh, after having done the QSC step, uh, the other step then is uh, signing the agreement. Um, so that happens in DocuSign. Uh, you would go to the agreement. Uh, there's a different agreement for every pool. Uh, created by the issuer of this pool. Um, here, you basically have to enter, again, quite a bit of personal information. Um, this is also different if you're investing as an in individual or if you're investing as an entity. Um, so we also we also have to enter some information about uh, taxes um, because there are kind of tax withhold withholding rules um, that the issuers have to comply to. Uh, but Martin is going to talk about this a little bit after my uh, quick presentation right now. Um, one thing to mention here is that uh, currently you're going to have to enter a lot of the, this information, unfortunately. Um, at some point, we do want to also uh, simplify this process. And so, for example, we're going to be able to take uh, more information that you've already entered in Securitize uh, and put it into this document and pre-fill it basically uh, to, again, save you some time. Um, and yeah, then you submit your agreement and your text form and, uh, and this entire uh, document. Um, then you might have to wait a little bit uh, because the issuer is going to uh, check the agreement uh, and hopefully sign it uh, or maybe tell you that you have to update something. Um, and yeah, that can go, might take a few hours, might take at most one or two days, hopefully. Um, and then uh, finally, you've finished KYC, you've signed the agreement, the issuer has also kind of signed the agreement, um, then you will actually be able to uh, invest. Um, and you can lock your die and uh, invest in one of the many assets that we already have. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand right now. Um, I think there are a lot of things that we're still looking into. Uh, the big area again is um, trying to make it easier to become a repeating investor. Um, trying to, if, you, if you're investing in one pool and then you wanna invest in another, right now you would just have to sign the agreement, but that still means that you have to enter a lot of information uh, we're going to make that simpler for you. Um, the other area is just generally kind of improving the UI, making it simpler to use, uh, explaining things better. Um, there is currently some research that you have to do yourself to figure out what kind of information you have to enter. Uh, we want to provide some guidance there. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it. Thank you, everyone. And I, again, if you have any feedback, questions, uh, please let me know. Um, if you have specific questions about your onboarding process, um, maybe it's better to do that over email because um, we don't want to be sharing personal information here. But uh, other than that, uh, I'm very open to hearing any, any questions or feedback. Thank you. Cool. Any questions? Um, there was some check the the chat, Joanne.
there was some feedback on, but the team is answering it around the the max. Yeah, the so the max was. I see a question about the maximum reserve. Um, the difficulty is that a lot of people don't fully understand the kind of the relation between the maximum reserve and the. Uh, it's not a very good reflection of what you can currently invest. Um, because, for example, let's say someone is trying to redeem money, then you can actually invest a little bit more. Or, for example, the DIN ratio, so the kind of the risk buffer that we have set for a pool, is also a factor here. So it's quite a complicated factor, kind of comp complicated uh, calculation. And um, so we found that people found the max reserve number quite confusing. And so for now, we've hidden it a little bit, although it's still shown on the asset step. Um, at some point in the future, uh, we're going to hopefully be able to show the actual investment capacity uh, in the UI. So if we show directly, like if you're wanting to invest now, how much can you invest? Um, but that's still on the backlog and we have a lot of things to do, but it will definitely be there some, at some point. Yeah, and questions sp specific to your own onboarding, um, drop us an email in the, um, the addresses in the chat. Um, there's a question from Ivor. When will we be able to invest in tin trance? That sounds like a... Uh, maybe I can take that. Of course, that depends on the issuer. So that's uh, the, the sole decision of the, of the issuer and they would like to open the tin tranche. Uh, and I guess it pretty much depends on the maturity of a, of a pool. Uh, when they believe uh, the, 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 you know, the pool is big enough, basically, uh, is diversified enough. That's actually also safe for investors uh, investing in tin. And again, that's a junior tranche. You know, you're participating uh, with every loss directly with, with your tin token. So that is, can be much more riskier than the senior tranche. That's why we had both the sinks with the two tranches, uh, tin protecting drop. And uh, that is uh, something I think the issuer would like to uh, most likely carefully open over, over time. Cool, let's move to tax. Uh, I mean, one of the things maybe just to add to Martin, if there's a particular pool that interests you, just reach out to the asset originators and uh, see what, they, what, what they're what interested or what their timeline is. That's really up to them um, to sort of decide and time. Yeah, Texas, um, let me give you a little bit of background because that's one of the questions we have realized uh, where uh, you know a, a lot of investors uh, have questions and uh, let me share my screen here and um, depending uh, on the on the pool uh, it's of course you know uh, either uh, a tax form you need to sign a US tax form you need to sign or not so I think all of the pools we have currently on Tin Lake uh, are uh, pools uh, from US issuers so uh, except one that is database finance. Uh, there, the issue is located in Hong Kong. And then it's, of course, the legal framework. Uh, the issuer has chosen uh, what investors are allowed. So for you, uh, the US pools, it is basically um, a lot of non-US countries plus US. But for the US, it's actually only uh, US accredited investors. So you need an accreditation status. You may have realized that already. Uh, if you go through onboarding uh, on securitized, if you're an, an US investor, you also need to verify your accreditation status. Uh, and that is a uh, prerequisite uh, for, for other pools that might be different. So what I'm uh, focusing on here right now is US pools, everything uh, except database finance uh, currently, if you look at tinlake.centrifuge.io uh, and uh, what those tax forms uh, might mean for you. Uh, I would start with an US uh, uh, investor. So pretending to be an US investor and, and what you might, uh, you know, uh, could could enter enter here. So that is not tax advice. It is more really, uh, you know, showing you how formally uh, the job can be done uh, in your specific situation. May consult your tax lawyer and, and and check what what is you know in your personal situation uh, is is uh, the appropriate appropriate answer here. Um, so what uh, the issuers typically do uh, is having an uh, agreement here for U.S. individual investor as well as for a uh, non-U.S. individual investor. And one of the first questions um, you get asked, excuse me, need to scroll up again. I think I pre-filled it out already, um, you know, to kind of uh, keep it a little bit, little bit easier is um, what investor type you are, you know? So um, 
these agreements, um, to make it simple, straightforward, are for individual investors. Uh, if you're others, you know, that means uh, in the US case, maybe uh, an individual uh, retirement account, an IRA, and uh, 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 kind of a shared account or an entity, a trust whatsoever, a company, um, reach out to the uh, 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 specific issuer like here, info at fortunafi.com uh, and then ask for a specific agreement and they will send it to you. Uh, that also needs more checks, etc. It's just the process more complex and most of the investors anyway, individuals. So, uh, you know, I just go through the case here for, for an individual investor. Uh, and then uh, I think Jerome, you have shown it already, you know, just enter the data here. Um, so in the US investor case, individual investors, your social security number here, uh, your address, et cetera. Uh, of course, don't forget to sign. And then uh, um, the fund with the tax form is actually starting. So US investors, um, they need uh, actually to sign a W-9. Why you need to do that is, of course, that the tax reporting of the issuer to the IRS. So the tax authority in US is, uh, is uh, working well and that actually the issuer does not have to withhold any taxes uh, on behalf of the investor. Um, so the data should be pre-filled. If you have that done on the, on, on the signature page, uh, all the data should be here again. You know, just check it. Most important one here is really uh, enter your social security number, uh, sign agreement, that's basically is. If one of those fields on the tax form uh, are not open, uh, to you, but important for you. Again, check that with your tax lawyer. Uh, like, you know, um, here maybe, you know, you're not an individual, but a C Corp, whatever reason, using still a W9 uh, and be still uh, an individual investor, reach out to the issuer. You know, if there is anything you cannot access here in this form, you are a, a more complex case, reach out to the issuer for an, for an individual uh, agreement. So that's basically is. Uh, for the uh, US case, any questions? And I would most likely continue. I'm not sure if there's anything in the chat. Um, just let me know, Kate. Uh, would uh, go on with the, with the more sophisticated non-US case. Uh, and I think also most of the, of the people here uh, joining us tonight uh, or maybe earlier the day, wherever you are, um, uh, that is as most likely more, you know, the, the non-US case. So um, if you look at the non-US case, um, oops, my session timed out, not too good. Uh, anyway, I, I will look at this a little bit later on again. Um, and this session timed out as well. Let me just refresh it, give me a second. I'm talking too much, I, I guess. And... Give me a second, just need to get it up again. Hopefully everyone's feeling nice and relaxed. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're all yeah, yeah. Um, so a non-US investor, um, again, a digital investor. Um, so same thing here, if you're on others, investor, basically an entity of whatever kind, reach out uh, to the issuer, uh, they will send you an individual agreement. So that one is really for individual investors. And then if you go on, um, again, you know, fill out all the fields here. Important and uh, 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 worth noticing is that this is really your local tax ID in this country of your uh, citizenship, of your uh, jurisdiction you're paying taxes. In uh, the tax form itself, if you are, um, that gets a little bit more complicated, you know? So there is a form in the US called W8BEN that is for uh, non-US individual beneficiaries. Uh, and uh, there are, again, you know, pre-fill the data with your name, the address, et cetera. Uh, and there are actually two cases. One case is uh, your home country, the country where you pay taxes, and where uh, you have that tax ID here um, that has a tax treaty with the US. You can find that if you go here. There's also, if you click on those fields, always a tooltip helping you a little bit how to fill it in, how to look at. If you go to that web page being mentioned here, irs.gov 
businesses, etc., uh, you can find those tax treaties uh, and also check if your country has a tax treaty or not. Uh, and if your country has a tax treaty, please enter the name of that country here. Here's an example for Italy. Uh, even if you're an Italian, if you live in Italy, pay taxes in Italy and have an Italian tax ID, uh, please do not give what I'm showing here for giving. That is an example uh, which might work for you, but check it with your tax lawyer in, uh, if you have any doubt. Um, so Italy has a tax treaty. You can you know, download it from the IRS webpage. Um, I guess it will be also available uh, with the Italian tax authorities and Italian, I guess. Um, and uh, the next thing you need to enter is really the paragraph which actually helps you to be exempt from this whole index. If that's not the case uh, and you are not able to enter here a zero, um, that might you know, uh, uh, bring the issuer to rejecting your, your, your subscription. I think most of the issuers on the platform, they do not and are not prepared to this whole taxes um, and they actually only accept investors which are not requiring uh, any, any this holdings. So uh, there is currently in those cases, at least for those issuers, also a check uh, that this is zero here. Um, typically this uh, WA ban shouldn't be accepted if you don't enter a zero here. Uh, here in this case, text really paragraph 13 is uh, uh, the, uh, and uh, what is it here? Par what is it? Uh, article 13 paragraph four? Uh, is uh, about a capital gain and capital gain exceptions. So uh, then here in the Italian case, you know, that's 13.4, uh, enter capital gain again, and I'm also actually kind of explain why uh, this is actually an ascent exempt from this holding. Uh, in this case, uh, what might work for you, it's really, hey, uh, what you're investing here is a personal property. Uh, it's uh, you're not connected and linked to that you have an office in US. So uh, it's really offshore for you as an Italian. That's why it ex is this exempt from, from this holding. Of course, don't forget to sign. That's basically it. Uh, I get there are questions. Uh, and uh, if there are questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Great. Thanks, Martin. Um, I think if you stop sharing the screen. I have one more uh, example, uh, <laughs> but I need to pull it up because it's most of the anyway. It would have timed out in the. Uh, in the meanwhile, that is uh, the, uh, give me a second. Uh, There's just one question coming through saying, is there any intent? Let me know. Um, there's just a question in the chat saying, is there any intent to automate part of the onboarding process using AI for KYC and regulatory compliance check checking, namely a data-driven and process-driven process? -driven difficult um, because you know hey it's a decentralized platform uh, i'm not sure if you know if that is really kind of matching this concept of of decentralization first thing second thing uh, is really i'm not sure if you have an uh, um, text advisor ai it's most likely you know i i believe in world of composability and and plug and play and adding those services and if there is something like a decentralized text advisor uh, of course we will we'll, uh, put it in Cool, in the future. Okay, so you wanna take us through to your last um, screen? I do, let me resume yeah. sharing. Uh, and there's also a little example here for, um, again, non-US, excuse me, that was the wrong one, but I clicked on, give me a second. Um, that is uh, this case here, I think. Too many agreements flying around here. Uh, let me share the screen again. I hope you see it. So that is non-US and uh, individual investors. I'm scrolling down directly to the tax form um, just to cover the other case. As I've mentioned, uh, there is this country, there's a tax treaty. My example was Italy here, uh, but there are also even more countries, uh, I think, uh, who, uh, which do not have a, a tax treaty with the US. Uh, and how to fill it out here. Uh, first of all, you know, really check uh, if this example here is uh, applying for your country. This is a uh, uh, more uh, general, uh, I think, uh, um, example here. Uh, if I remember right, I'm not sure what, what, where we took it from. I think it was uh, Chile, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyhow, you know. Anyway, um, that is uh, something which might work in the country, maybe not. Uh, check a tax lawyer if there's any doubt. Um, what do you do here if your country has no tax treaty? 
just you know uh, fill in here NA not applicable. The same here for the article, the paragraph. Uh, and what could be an exemption here is like uh, you know the the like the the uh, the, the IRC rules uh, 865 871 capital gain exemptions. And then again, uh, uh, idea could be here that you know as a resident of this country. Uh, you actually, you know, will not be in US, will not be taxable in US. So, you know, you will uh, uh, not uh, be 138 days or more in US in, in a specific tax year. And that also actually the gain again is an intangible personal property. And it's not connected to an, any office you might have in US, you know. And so if that, that is the case, uh, it's likely to be an exemption from this holding. Uh, we cannot guarantee that. It's really kind of, you know, we are, we are speaking uh, with tax lawyers uh, to get some advice here and to, to help you a little bit. Uh, but again, it's a very general guidance. Great. Right, let's see if there are questions. Um, if that's your last uh, slide. That is uh, my, my last. It's uh, actually live here, DocuSign. Um, again, you know, here also, uh, all these fields, uh, they help you a little bit with, with, with tips, etc. So be careful, put your mouse in and, and read the, the tool tips. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. And if you can, there we go. Cool. Um, any quick questions on, on tax? I should have many because it's an area of learned helplessness for me. I see the forms and then I like, I don't know. <laughs> Anyone else? Maybe we'll have to go to the floor. Okay, well, send the, send the questions through in the support channels. Um, thanks a lot, Martin. And I'll just ask Ash to take us away from um, that area and into a quick update about the Discord missions before we end the call. Hey guys, so yeah, um, the Discord missions are off to a great start in my opinion, and uh, it was really nice to see all the participation and the creativity. Um, just a really quick update, so we have Discord Mission 5 that's being planned to be launched next, sometime next week, we're thinking Tuesday, I think is what Cassidy mentioned. And then uh, around that time, we'll probably think about introducing the bonus mission as well. Um, so yeah, we really like how it's working out so far and uh, the community's coming together and people are chiming in to help each other and you really this is what we want for the for the discord mission program so it's nice to see. Congrats. Um, can you drop the a link in the chat Ash, just in case someone hasn't heard about the missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you explain in two words what missions are. Just a set of tasks that we're holding for the community. And so these specific tasks are like involving things that help spread the word about Centrifuge. Um, really kind of, we want to convey to other people out there, out there what the advantages of Centrifuge is. And um, also bring other people, attract other people to Centrifuge. Um, so yeah, I'll post up a link on our Discord or for our Discord um, for you to check it out. Cool. Okay, so we have reached the end of the call. Um, there's just one really important update that we saved till, till last. Um, just let me grab it. It's, um, it's a very cool um, announcement that you're the first to discover as the people who stuck to the end of this call. So thank you. Um, so we have a new asset originator joining us. Um, GameStop. Any any thoughts? Any comments? No, actually, I'm just kidding. Um, probably not a good idea. <laughs> no, so, no, someone Sarah got that. It what was a joke! <laughs> yeah. How do I invest? Just take, take all my time right now. Thank you. Cool. Um, everyone, hope you have a great uh, Easter holiday. If you're taking a holiday, which we hope you are. Thank you so much for joining and um, we'll see you in two weeks time. And yeah, there's still some questions coming through. So if um, a couple of people can stay around just to answer 
that that would be great thanks so much everyone and thanks all presenters thank you.